Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Karishma Panwani. I'm the Director of Product Management responsible for MapleSoft's academic product offerings. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of everything that Maple 2020 has to offer. So without further ado, let's begin. Maple 2020 is full of features that will entice new and existing users. In fact, the bullet list that you see on my screen is only a partial list of what's in Maple 2020. But when I look back at this release, the thing that stands out the most is the number of features that were driven as a direct consequence of customer-driven, user-focused initiatives. While we always enlist feedback from our user base, we made a concerted effort to do even more for Maple 2020. And the result is a release that I truly believe will be meaningful to our entire user base, be they students, teachers, researchers, scientists, and engineers. Now, for the sake of time, and because the audience comes from such a diverse background, I'm going to present the features of Maple 2020 that I believe will resonate the most with those in attendance. Let's start with the math. For those of you that conduct mathematics research, you'll be pleased to know that Maple 2020 continues to be at the forefront of computational mathematics. Improving the math and solving harder problems faster than anyone else is an area that we are committed to improving release after release. In Maple 2020, in addition to advancements in ODEs and PDEs, graph theory and integral transforms, and you'll learn more about these improvements shortly. We've also made significant improvements in the area of group theory and the fundamental routines that are used regularly by both customers and other Maple commands. More explicitly, in Maple 2020, the group theory package has been extended to include new tools for classifying groups, and new commands have been added for computation and analysis. Many simplification routines now return improved results. Assumption handling is more powerful, flexible, and user-friendly. We've made improvements in the integration of algebraic, elementary, and piecewise functions, and we can now compute more hypergeometric mathematical functions than before. And the list goes on and on. You can read all of the details in the What's New material on our website. As with the previous slide, an area of mathematics that Maple excels at is our ability to find exact solutions to ordinary and partial differential equations. One of the main reasons we continue to push the boundaries in this area is because our users, such as those attending today's session, demanded of us. In fact, I didn't realize this until very recently, until very recently, but an overwhelming majority of the posts that are submitted by users on Maple Primes, our user community forum, deal with topics of finding exact solutions to ODEs and PDEs. For Maple 2020, we've extended our lead in this area by adding new algorithms and techniques for solving more ODEs and PDEs. Specifically, Maple 2020 includes new, more general algorithms for computing hypergeometric solutions for second order linear ODEs, exact solutions for new classes of PDEs with boundary and initial conditions, Mellon and Henkel transform solutions for, PDA, for PDEs with boundary conditions, new methods for finding general PDE solutions, and more. If this is an area of interest to you, I'd encourage you to take a look at the examples we've compiled in Maple 2020. If you don't have Maple 2020, remember that you can download a trial version directly from our website. Now let's talk about integral transforms. Integral transforms in Maple have been extended to make them more useful for a variety of applications in mathematical physics, engineering, and more, including computing integrals and finding exact solutions to PDEs with boundary conditions. Improvements include the option to compute derivatives, new algorithms for the numeric evaluation of inverse Laplace transforms, an alternate definition of the Henkel transform, and the ability to compute more integral transforms. A substantial effort was put into graph theory for Maple 2020, including significant enhancements in visualization, flexible graph manipulation options, powerful analysis tools, and support for new special graphs and graph properties. Here are some of the things that Maple 2020 has to offer in this area. You get more control over the appearance of graphs with extended support for style sheets, new arrow shapes, colored vertex borders, styles for graph components, and the ability to style graph vertices and edges with respect to properties such as centrality or weight. A number of new ways to lay out plots of graphs, including spectral two and three dimensional layouts, a new interactive method that lets you lay out graphs manually, dragging vertices to new positions, a new sub-package for generating graphs from geometric data, eight new functions for calculating the centrality of vertices in a graph, 
and 18 additional special graphs, bringing the total up to 97. Maple provides a state-of-the-art environment for algebraic computations in physics, with emphasis on ensuring that the computational experience is as natural as possible. Along with general consolidation and improvements, Maple 2020 provides significant enhancements to further strengthen the functionality for physics in the area of particle physics and general relativity. Having said that, Maple is the world's best tool, hands down, for doing tensor computations in physics. Our developer is very passionate about this subject and he's been refining this functionality over the past, over the last few releases, and this year is no exception. If you have specific questions about the physics package in Maple, take a look at Maple Primes. Our developer is often posting white papers and responding to user questions. We implemented the signal processing package several years ago, and for each successive release, we've added more and more features. We focused on this area in direct response to feedback we received from our engineering user base, specifically electrical engineers. In this release, we've made improvements to the signal processing package, as well as added new tools to related packages in audio tools and image tools. Some of the signal processing improvements you'll find in Maple 2020 are new commands for detecting straight lines in an image, a new signal processing tool computes cross-correlation of matrices. The convolution command now supports signals with complex elements. A new discrete wavelet transform command, sorry, a new discrete wavelet transform command computes the Haar wavelet of a grayscale or color image. Some of the improvements that you'll find in the audio tool package are the ability to read in part of an audio file by specifying the range of samples you want to extract. You can now create audio effects more quickly with a significantly faster convolution operation. You can now create 32-bit and 64-bit wave files. And Maple 2020 allows you to write audio files with sample rates up to 4.29 gigahertz and generate white noise. If signal, audio, and or image processing is of interest to you, then I encourage you to take a look at the examples that we've added to the product for Maple 2020. As many of you already know, Maple includes and is most and is almost entirely written in a pro as many of you already know, Maple includes and is almost entirely written in a powerful programming language, especially designed for working with mathematics. Now we focused on programming and specifically improving the debugging tools because all of our users, including students, use programming to support their work. And we wanted it to be easier for them to fix and find problems in their own code. So Maple 2020 includes enhancements to execution, execution tracing. A new help command in the debugger displays help on individual commands, provide lists of relevant commands for a specific topic, and provides a cross-reference for GDB users. The new debugger command stops ex execution at any statement executed after the current procedure returns, instead of the next statement executed in the calling procedure. And most error and warning messages can now display the source file name and the line number of the statement in which the error occurred when the source code is available. There are two subjects on this slide, printing and PDF export and LaTeX export. And I want to address both separately. Every Maple user prints and exports to PDF. It doesn't matter if you're a student writing an assignment, a math prof preparing lecture notes, or a professional engineer creating design documents. You're going to print, and you're going to export to PDF. In Maple 2020, we've addressed issues to printing and PDF export that ensure that the printed document looks much, much better. In particular, we've made the following improvements. You can now control how sections are displayed, Plots now better maintain the aspect ratio defined in the worksheet. Images encoded at regions fit better when exported to PDF. Page headers and footers can now be set up to apply globally, so you can put the same headers or footers on all of your Maple documents. If you ran into issues with printing and PDF export in the past, I'd recommend taking a look at Maple 2020. Let's move on to LaTeX. While you could always generate LaTeX code from individual math equations and entire Maple worksheets, 
there were issues with the way equations were laid out, and certain elements such as code edit regions were not exported properly. In Maple 2020, we've addressed many issues with LaTeX, specifically 1D code and code edit regions look a whole lot better, 2D map is typeset properly, inserting images within our LaTeX file is now easier, and now you can export hyperlinks and bookmarks as well. Now let's shift to the use of Maple Link teaching. One of the things I hear most from instructors and students alike is how much they love Maple for calculus, which is great, but unfortunately the same wasn't true for linear algebra. When I spoke to instructors about using Maple for linear algebra, I was often confronted with statements like, we like it, but... So in Maple 2020, we decided to focus our attention on eliminating the but and making Maple a better tool for linear algebra. So what did we do? Um, instructor told us they wanted visualization, so we added many visualizations such as cross product, eigenvectors, least square, linear system, linear transformations, planes, projections, and vector sums. We made changes to the Gaussian elimination, Gauss-Jordan elimination, and matrix inverse tutors, so they now return step-by-step -step solutions once you exit the tutor. We added new commands for matrix inverse, pseudo-inverse, exponential, and cross product. And we added new interactive math apps specifically to address topics in linear algebra. If you teach linear algebra or know some, or know some, if you teach linear algebra or know someone who does, please take a look at all of the improvements that Maple 2020 has to offer. I'm confident you will like what you see. Maple goes. Maple's clickable math functionality is a beloved feature of students and teachers alike. It reduces the learning curve involved in using tools like Maple and makes Maple more approachable to new users. More importantly, it lets users focus on math and not syntax or programming. Our collection of math apps has been extended to include explorations for linear algebra, as I mentioned earlier, visualizing 2D and 3D coordinate systems, exploring the behavior of solitary waves and double pendulums, investigating triangles and other basic shapes, and visualizing bivariate limits. At this point, I want to shift gears and talk about all the things that we've done in Maple 2020 to help new users become productive faster than ever. Now, some of the things that I'm most proud of are the updates that we've made to the start page. Um, the new start page includes guidance on how to help users choose between document mode and worksheet mode, something that has been requested by users. We have an updated Get to Know Maple Fast video, which provides a brief overview and key information to help all users with their first Maple interactions. There's a revised Maple Fundamentals guide that covers more topics and includes information about the differences when working in worksheet mode. And just in general, the presentation of that start page is simpler, and it clearly points out the most important resources for a brand new Maple user. A few other things that I'm particularly proud about. More of the error messages have help pages associated with them, and existing help pages have been improved to help users diagnose and recover from errors more quickly. And reactivating a time-limited license, which many students use until they validate their student status, is significantly easier. In addition, warnings now appear when Maple detects that a user is using E and D as variables when they most likely mean the exponential constant E and the derivative operator D. Now, this is a common mistake most often made by students, but in previous releases, no warning was given to let students know they made a mistake. We added this in direct response to feedback we received from students and teachers alike with the goal of making Maple even easier to use. Now, the last item that I want to cover today is the Maple Companion. If you're wondering why the Maple Companion, our free mobile app, is on the Maple 2020 list, it's because the Maple Companion acts both as a complement to desktop Maple as well as a standalone math tool. As a Maple user, you can use the Maple Companion to bring math that is right in front of you into Maple using your phone's camera, where you can then access the full power of Maple for solving, visualizing, and exploring your math. As a standalone math tool, the Maple Companion helps students learn math and provides a way for them to check their homework even when the answers are not in the back of the book. Now, we've received feedback from many instructors saying they recommend the Companion app to students as a way to help avoid transcription errors and get the math they need into Maple faster. Now, this concludes our presentation today. 
If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email. If you want to learn more about Maple 2020, please visit our website. You'll find tons of information on all the features I mentioned in this presentation. Alternatively, if you want to see Maple 2020 in action, make sure to download the free trial of the product, which you can do directly from the website. If you do, I recommend taking a look at the What's New pages for each of the features I mentioned above. Thank you so much for joining me today.